If you come to the Cloud Foundry, uh, intro to Cloud Foundry, you're in the right room. If, if you're looking for something else, I'm in the wrong place. So, anyway, um, I think this is my fourth year speaking here. But I third or fourth, I can't about um, But uh, I've, I've talked before about things like uh, solid state disk drives and things like that. But I've actually switched companies now over the past 15 months, and I've actually worked for six of now. So I'm getting involved in a lot of kind of interesting and strange things for me anyway. So one of the things we we have a product um, that, we've, that we've been working with for a while, it's called Cloud Foundry. And I thought it might be interesting for folks that have never seen Cloud Foundry or have wondered about it, you might have heard about it, to just give you a quick intro. If you're a really experienced DevOps guy, I'm probably going to bore you silly, so don't, uh, uh, I will not be offended if you get up and walk away. But th this is really kind of an intro to the whole process and how it works. Um, and I'm going to give you a challenge at the end um, to go off and learn some more on your own. Okay? Because I can only give you a little bit of, of a taste of this, but at the end of the day, if you really are interested, there's some ways you can go out and really learn a lot about this. So well, without any further ado, we'll sort of jump into it and uh, we'll see how it goes. So we're going to go through kind of an intro to Cloud Foundry, um, Cloud Foundry basics and how we can uh, use it. We'll, we'll do a demo and we'll do as much of a demo as I can do before I run out of time. So I, I think I've got enough here to cover us. Um, um, and, then and then I'll show you some more resources that you can use. You um, and then you can get a copy of this presentation. I'm glad to give you a copy. It's 74 slides, but, but I'm going to use like 16 of them today. Yourself, but but, but if you want to go through the, the learning process yourself, I've got slides in there that will actually take you through the process so that you can go do all this on your own. Try it yourself. And, and, and learn even more. So, so that's the that, that's kind of the that's the challenge at the end. So don't be scared by the 74 slides. I'm trying not to uh, freak you out too much. Um, my name is Wayne Sims. If you didn't catch that already, uh, I live in Raleigh, um, and uh, uh, I've been working in this industry for quite a while. I, I spent 16 years in Silicon Valley, um, and then I've lived in Raleigh since 2000. Working for various companies, I worked for Sunny for a while. I worked for um, uh, a company called Steel Eye Technologies, based uh, in California, that has a lot of its operations down in Columbia. Um, so I worked for them for quite a while. I also worked for Fusion IO, Sandisk, and Western Digital. But I moved to SUSE um, in March of last year. So I've been doing some very interesting stuff, working with global SI partners which I've never done before, so this has been a really interesting and fun learning experience for me. So that's kind of who uh, I am. Working with a lot of those so kind of So why do they call this so thing Cloud that's, Foundry? That's kind of who I am. Um, so why do they call this thing Cloud Foundry? Has anybody ever heard of Cloud Foundry in here? Do you know, you know a little bit about it? So this is an open source project that was started by VMware a few years ago. Um, and it, it's spun off into its own foundation now. Uh, it's got a lot of big industry the support from, from a lot of fairly large folks. But the, the idea behind Cloud Foundry is, is what you do is you take raw materials, the basics of raw materials in this case are code, and you put this into the process and it churns out for you an application that's running in the cloud. And that's the, that's the basics for how it all works. So it's a, it's a very uh, quick and nice process. I, I was working with SUSE for probably seven or eight months. I was hearing a lot of the stuff about Cloud Foundry because we, we actually have a Cloud Foundry distribution ourselves that we that we support. And I didn't quite get it. And there were other ones out there as well. And I didn't quite get it until I walk through some of the stuff that I'm going to show you here today. That's kind of what I want to relate to. I then saw where all the excitement comes from. So that's kind of what I want to relate to you is some of the excitement that you might get out of seeing this thing called Cloud Foundry. So the, the, the big premise behind all this is there's a wall between the dev, the dev people and the ops people. Um, the dev folks are trying to write code, they're trying to make the changes that they need to make to make the applications work, and the ops guys get to go deploy this stuff. And there is really a wall between them. 
And what we're trying to do is make this easier for the whole process to work. Um, and trying to make it so much easier for the devs to be able to get out there and actually make the code and deploy it themselves. That's the nice thing about this. When you actually get to set up a Cloud Foundry, they can go and actually deploy their applications themselves. Um, especially for the test environment um, and, and even in the, in the staging environment. Then they can hand it to the ops guys who can actually then take and push it all the way out. But the whole pipeline is kept nice and clean with these things that are called build packs, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. But the, the whole Cloud Foundry process really streamlines the process of actually building code and then pushing it out to the web. So we'll kind of walk through that and get an idea of what it looks like. So there's a really interesting haiku that um, this guy, Anzi Fakhoury, came up with. Now, Anzi actually is, the, he works for our competitor, which is Pivotal. Um, Pivotal um, is, is the, one of the early folks in the, uh, um, in the Cloud Foundry uh, process. Um, but I, I love his haiku that he came up with. Here's my source code. Run it on the cloud for me. I do not care how. And that is really the premise behind all this, is that, that it's so easy to do that you don't have to think a lot about it. The, the, the Cloud Foundry system actually takes care of actually pushing the whole thing out for you and doing the hard stuff. And doing the hard stuff over and over and over again and making it right when you have to go into when, when you actually go into production. So that uh, um, the, the, the devs folks can actually just specify what they need, and then when you actually go to push it into deployment, it's all there. So we don't have to worry about, oh, geez, did that firewall get set up properly? Did that, uh, which library did I really need for that? I don't need this version of that uh, stack of code. All this stuff's taken care of. And, 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 you, and you pull it exactly what you need when you go to deploy. So and that's again, the, sort of the basics behind the high there. The so again, Cloud Foundry is an open source platform. It is completely open source. Um, I, again, I work for SUSE. SUSE doesn't do anything that is open source. We have no intellectual property whatsoever. Um, we, we are a services-based company. We don't, uh, uh, all the code that you write is open source. You can go grab a copy of it and take a look. And that includes the file boundary stuff that we do as well. So this is a platform as a service kind of piece of code um, that lets you take application code and push it out to the, to the cloud in an operational fashion. So these are some of the folks that are actually involved in Cloud Foundry. Um, you'll notice big names here like SAP and IBM. Um, Huawei is in there, Pivotal again, I, I mentioned before, Swisscom is one of our partners in this, there's a company called Indyines in Europe, I'll give you some more information about them in a little bit, because they actually have a cloud, they have a cloud foundry system that you can go out and actually use yourself. They have a free sign up level, go out, no credit card needed, plug your uh, information in and you can actually get a uh, an instance on the Indyines cloud, uh, cloud Foundry and actually try all of this yourself. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Um, the nice thing about this from an operational level, they, they're, the nice thing about this from an operational level, it all works the same. Now the one that we built is a little different. I'll talk about that in a second. Why, uh, why SUSE's uh, Cloud Foundry is a little different from the, one, the, the product that we call Cloud Application Platform. Um, but it is our implementation of Cloud Foundry. Ours is kind of unique. We don't actually have a public system that we're running. We're talking about that. There's some, there's some ideas that we may actually spend one of them for folks to use. We don't have it today. But uh, you can go use the any nines one and you'll get the same, same, same customer experience that you would if you actually were using ours. So, we, we have here so let's talk about some of these terms. Um, so we, we have here a number of different things. We'll kind of go through them pretty quick. We have this control plane. The control plane is sort of the plumbing for the entire Cloud Foundry system. Um, it's all the nodes that you need to operate on to actually make this thing work. Um, if you look at traditional Cloud Foundry systems, this is pretty heavy. I think the smallest um, the smallest cloud boundary system that you could put together with the traditional way of doing it is about, I think it's about 12 machines, 12 virtual machines to make it all work. So if you're going and spinning this up in GCP or you're spinning it up in, in, in Amazon or somewhere like that, it's pretty hefty. And you're going to have to be spending a few bucks to get the thing running. 
process of that is one reason why we created the cloud boundary uh, process that we have. And again, that's down there for a thing called CAP, which is the SUSE Cloud Application Platform. Our system runs on top of Kubernetes. So we containerize all the control plane and all the pieces of cloud boundary that you need to run. So we can run about a third of the, of the resources that you would take and we've got, to use we're if you're using a traditional cloud boundary uh, system. Again, we've got, we, we're running on top of Kubernetes. Um, there's a, a, a system called Stratus. I'm going to show you Stratus in just a little bit. Stratus is actually a web UI for actually getting into Cloud Foundry. And this is, this is one of SUSE's big contributions to the whole Cloud Foundry system, is Stratus. We actually built this nice dashboard that lets you go and actually uh, go in and query about what's going on. And the nice thing about it, Stratus works with any Cloud Foundry. It doesn't work with just our cloud application platform, you can use it with any of the, um, the Cloud Foundry systems. You can actually point it, if you have one stood up at any nines or Swisscom or somewhere like that, you can point it to one of those. So uh, it works across the board. Um, you're also going to hear this term called build packs, Cloud Foundry build packs. These are really important. These are the, the, sort of the, um, the, the big idea that you get when you're using uh, they take cloud boundary. Your code They're kind of the universal translators. They take and look at your code and figure out what you need to use uh, for uh, or what it's going to need to actually deploy your piece of code. So there are build packs that are built, and, I, and I've got a bigger list here that we'll kind of go through them, for many different languages. Things like Ruby, Python, uh, things so like Perl, things like build packs um, that are out Python. There so we've got a number of different build packs that are out there and available for you to use and if you to actually want to build your own, uh, you can do that your too. Code There's some language and if you want to, work in, want to build your own, you can do that too. There's some language you want to work in, say you know, Java or Ruby doesn't uh, work for you. Something like uh, build your own build pack. Python or, that's or Ruby doesn't work for you. If you want to build your own build pack. That's You're available, also going to hear a term and, and that's a, you, 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 you can do that as well. You're also going to hear a term called Bosch used okay, quite so a bit. Most of the Everybody here has heard of Bosch a little bit? Are built okay, so most of the traditional cloud foundry Sousa's systems cloud foundry are built on top of Bosch. Does not use Bosch. Sousa's cloud foundry, our, our cloud application Bosch. platform, does not use Bosch. We, don't we, we use completely it eliminated we Bosch from our system, so we don't use it at all. We actually took completely did this um, on top I, I will of give you a, so I, I didn't put the slide in, but, but, um, but I, I will give you a, a I, I didn't put the slide in, but Google, but, but if you get a chance Google at some point in time, learning Google Cloud Bosch Google Bosch Google Learning Bosch Curve. And look at the Bosch picture. Learning Curve. Just Google that. Out. And look at the picture that you'll somebody's see. It's a really humorous and you'll get a kick out of what the Bosch but, uh, Somebody's put together a really cool little, little picture of what the so Bosch Again, I've talked a little bit about the SUSE Cloud application platform. So again, I've talked a little bit about the SUSE Cloud application platform. platform. This is this is basically Cloud Foundry with a modern infrastructure. Uh, we've actually taken Taken and actually so built this on top of, it makes it run a lot of Kubernetes, <laughs> <laughs> containerized the whole thing. It makes it run a lot, a, a lot smaller piece of, of hardware. And the you don't need nearly as many resources to run. Um, and the scheduling and, and, and those pieces will work a little, a little better as well. Um, and you'll see that that this is going to improve over time. Um, that we we've, uh, we've got a number of other things we're actually pulling into the system. So we're on our uh, we're on one point four release right now, and we're about to we will be releasing the two point zero release before the now, end of the year. How did so SUSE get involved in this? We, we well, it's a long this. story. Now, we wound how up did SUSE get involved in this? Acquiring well, it's a long story, but we wound up uh, was the folks who acquiring a company called Staccato. Originally, and Staccato was the folks who are actually who are actually originally created this version. They're all on SUSE employees now, and they're uh, all give you and, uh, about that doing fun and wonderful like things. Like to hear about if you, it, uh, I can give you some more stories about that later. So these like are some of the build packs that are available that, uh, that are just now. part of the system. So these are some of the build packs that are available that, that are just part of the system that are out there. Again, you've got Go, Java, Python, and Ruby. 
And again, uh, most of the things out there that you're going to want to use are already there. Now, you and again, if, there, if it's not there, you can go and build your own. Uh, that, now, you will notice there so that, that's, that's that there's a, a .NET core that well. um, that, that's Windows out there. So that's, that's a lot of folks are starting to use that one as well. Windows support is probably the one area in, in Cloud Foundry that needs better better use. If you really want to build in Windows, this is a Linux conference, so I'm not too worried about that. But if you are a Windows developer, uh, this is probably the one area that needs to improve more in the Cloud Foundry movement than anything else that I know of. And, and there, are, there, is some, there is some work going on to actually make that a little better. So uh, we also are part that, of this project as we go along. Arini. Um, we also are part of this project called Project really Crunch Arini. Arini is actually, is actually um, a, really a further extension of what SUSE has already cloud done and actually containerizing what we, what cloud platform. What Arini so does the cloud is what kind of so what we, what, what Arini so does is let you actually pick what kind of scheduling you want to use. So if you don't want to use the actual native part of scheduling cloud Foundry that's in to actually um, schedule it and, and that's part of Cloud Foundry to actually schedule it and, and deal with the, the applications that you're building, you can actually use Kubernetes instead. Eventually let you choose. And so this is a project that, that SUSE has been very, very involved in and in actually getting uh, into the Cloud Foundry process. We actually have this as a tech preview in our current release. We're a big backer of that. We actually have this as a tech preview in our current release. So we'll get into some of the Cloud Foundry basics. One of the things that... that so we'll get into some of the Cloud Foundry basics. One of the things that... that what is command line? There's two main ways for interacting with Cloud Foundry. What is command line? And this being a Linux conference, I would imagine uh, most folks here are pretty comfortable with the command, 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 command line. Uh, there is a CF command line. Um, we'll you can download that and put it on your system. I've got it here loaded on my laptop. We'll be playing with that in just a minute. So the, the, CF, it's available the CF command line is available. Uh, Mac, and, and Windows. It's available on uh, Mac, Windows, Linux, just about every platform that you would want to run. I have played with it on both Windows and Linux, and it works very well. It works the same on both systems. So you can actually interact with your platform. Um, if you're, uh, if you're saddled with a Windows laptop at work or something platform. like that, so if you're, you know, if you're saddled with a Windows laptop at work or something like that, the other way is Stratus. We'll talk about that. Very well. but that's a, a um, the other way is Stratus, and we'll talk, take a look at that in a minute. But that's a, a really based way of actually interacting with the operations cloud types to be able to go uh, in. And really good for the, the probably the operations right. types to be able to go in and actually look and see what's actually been deployed, what's actually running. Do all that kind of stuff. You need to scale things up or scale things down. You can do all that kind now, of stuff. I know you Stratus. cannot see this at all, and I really apologize for that. But this, now, I know you cannot see this at all, and I really this apologize for that. The but this, but grab a slide later, you can take it's a look. Really this basically is showing you the login, login process for Cloud Foundry. It's really simple. You type CF login, boom, and you're in an annotation to this process. You put your email address in, once you've established an account in the system, and, and, and here I was actually using the, the NE9 system to, to actually get on in this place. You get in, uh, take a uh, where I took CF login, but you get in, take a CF login, type your username, your password, it will ask you what space you want to be running in. You can then, more like little uh, and, and we'll talk about spaces here in a minute, but these are more like little, kind of, uh, uh, little buckets that you can work in yourself. So you can assign spaces for uh, each one of your devs, each one of your teams, uh, those kind of things. It basically will ask you what space you want to be running in. Once you've got that established, you log in. So and, and basically, then you here's the relationship. Start, start playing. Organization um, so basically, apps. here's the relationship so between org, org, organization, case, spaces, and apps. But basically, you have an org. In, in my case, I have on the Cloud Foundry that I'm using, uh, the <coughs> CAP I have a really set up for this for me. So AWS. Wayne, um, I have an org set up for just for me. Uh, uh, Sims, uh, and I can create different spaces right, is the inside there. Set up in. And then I can create different uh, spaces inside, inside there Again, for various operations inside my corporation. Again, I'm just one guy, uh, guy, so I don't but worry I too much about it. I just got to test uh, 
well, test space and develop, develop. But I can build one for task development within each development team. I can build one for task deployment, I can build one whatever. For I can have all those spaces deployment, built. Uh, test deployment, have whatever. I can have all those spaces built. Instances. And then I can have apps inside, inside of those. those. And then and also service instances very running inside those as well. Of so you can have. Uh, System. Very compartmentalized sure kinds of each other's toes uh, as you're working uh, on. system here. And again, to make sure you don't step on each other's this, toes as you're working on this. And, and again, building, the nice thing about this, I don't have to worry about going out and building, 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 building uh, the, the uh, test group inside the set of servers. I don't have to worry about building the deployment guys that are inside the servers. I can use the same file boundary system for the whole thing. So now, without any further ado, let me check the time check here. So now, without any further ado, let me check. I have another, a time check here. So I'm um, at 10.36. So I think I have another um, so we're gonna, about we're 40 minutes to go here. So I'm doing pretty well on the time. So we'll see so how we're this gonna, goes. We're going to walk slowly through some demos I didn't sacrifice here. So we'll see how this goes. So I don't know. I didn't sacrifice anything to the demo guys this morning. So I don't know what that's going to do to us. I will as soon as I get my, you know what I mean? I will as soon as I get my, you know what I mean? Yes, I will. So let's so take again, a look yes, I will. first here at that shell. Can you so read let's that? take a look first that pretty here. Nice? Okay. At that shell. So you read I'm that? actually in one of the first things I'm going to show you So I'm actually in one of the first things How would I deploy this web app? Well, let's take a look. Web app. How would I deploy this web app? Well, let's take a quick look. Okay. First. So I'm actually in a little directory here. It's got a few files in it. This is a Ruby. So I'm actually in a little directory here. It's got a few files in it. This is a Ruby application. Web app. Um, it's called really simple. It's a very simple thing. I'm it's not a Ruby web app at all. So. It's really simple. It's somebody that really understands Ruby can probably developer explain developer things to me. So but, uh, somebody that really understands Ruby can probably explain things to me. But uh, I'll just do a quick uh, take a look at the big actual source and basically it's, this is going to deploy a little web based application and basically this is going to deploy a little web based application that should say I'm your first web app what do I need to do to go deploy this thing that's basically what what would I need to do to go deploy this thing that's basically what what do I need to do to go deploy this thing that's basically what let's go do that what my family is going to answer for me so let's go do that it's pretty simple I do see that push it's pretty simple. That's I do CF push. And I just will stand back and let it run. That's it. So basically what's happening now is And I just will stand back and let it run. So basically what's my happening code. now is Cloud Foundry is interacting my code, pulling with in the build my source code. Looking at my source code, code, source code, code pulling in the build packs that it needs whole process. for my source code as it looks at it. Goes through the whole process. Links, all the stuff brings it all together. To compiles. Uh, uh, links, all the stuff that you is actually have to do if you're deploying a web, uh, uh, an application, and then it's actually going to push it out to the to the to the cloud. So it's going through the process here. Watch it run. Fun, fun, fun to watch it run. So it's going and pulling things in. Um, so it's going and pulling things in. It's actually deploying now. This is actually uh, deploying to a Diego cell. So it's actually deploying now. This is actually deploying to a Diego cell. So this is not. This is on a version of that's running out in AWS. So we're still, AWS, so we're still using the, the, the internal cloud family. You'll notice here one of the things it's actually finished. It says it's running. This one. And you'll notice here one of the things it's actually finished. It says it's running. Okay, the um, route and is it's uh, given me a route and a name. Okay, the route is actually an IP address and so a name. If I, I take can go that, use to I can actually get this go and so pull that in. So if I take that, I can actually go and pull let's that in. But let's let's go a different way. This is my Stratos. Let's go out to log in. My, and I and I can actually log in the Stratos. I've done that. Here. You'll see there I've and got I, one. I can actually log into Stratos. I, I, I've done that. that and you'll see there I've got one application. Not, let's, let me try. In, is that big enough? No, not big enough. Let me try. Good deal. Good deal. So everybody read that now? 
Looking good? Okay. So at this point now, we've deployed web app. Looking good? You can see down there, there he is. So at this point now, we've deployed web app. And I can go you can see down there, there he is. He's about he's actually there. He's right now taking 64 megabytes of memory. It's just not a big application. He's right now taking 64 megabytes of memory. It's not a big application at all or anything like that. He's using one gigabyte of disk photo. Um, I see there he was created at 1038 this morning. It's at the bottom right. But let's go here and look at this thing on route. You'll notice there, that's the same thing. Let's go here and look at this thing on route. And you'll notice there, that's the same thing that we saw in the command line when this thing actually got deployed. If I go and say, well, let's go and look at this in the new tab, bang. So I have deployed basically by type CF push. I have so now I have deployed, basically, by typing CF push, push and I have now picked up an application, running out. a Ruby-based so application. That's kind of cool, I think. I, I mean, the first time I tried that, I said. So that's kind of cool, I think. I, I mean, the first time I tried that, I said. Well, let's, let's take this to another level. That's kind of neat. I like that. Well, let's, let's take this to another level here. So and, 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 and see what will happen. One of the other CF commands you could type. One of the other CF commands you could type. I can see now. I, 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 this thing called Web App. Now I can see that I have a Ruby based application. And I can see that I have this thing called Web App running. And there's my URL. There's my route that's assigned to that. And there's my route that's assigned to my app. Let's do this. Remember a second ago. So let's do this. I mean, if you remember a second ago. So you can see there I have this thing um, called config.ru. Let's go so and edit that. You can see there I have this thing called config.ru. Let's go and edit that. We'll make a change to that line. I'm your Let's first go down and we'll make a change to that line. I'm your app. first tab web app. Okay, so now we've made a change here to, to the source code. Okay, so now we've made a change here there. To, to the source code. What do I do? Oh, all I need to do is there. do a CF push. What do I do? Oh, all That's I need to do is do a CF Let's push. See. So this time he's going to pick up that change source code. He's going to do the, so this time he's going to pick up that change source code. He's going to do the changes. Uh, you know, as, as, as I'm a developer here, I'm going through and making changes and making and then when I want to go doing, test to see how it's working in our in features to my code. And then when I want to go test to see how it's working in our in our in our void atmosphere. All I have to do is push basically pushes it out to the web. The route's not going to change. Basically, the route that I assigned to it before so we should be the same. And as there we are through. again. So if I type CF, so he's starting at that button, and app. there we are again. So if I type app. CF, app. App. find out all about this app, app that's running. App. There's the route that we had before. I find out all about this app that it's running. There's the route that we had before. The terrific thing that's all kind of good. If I go back so down to my so let's um, if I go back down here to Stratus, okay, he's still there. And so let's oh, there it is. look at him again. We'll get him in a new tab. Oh, there it is. That's my change. It's now pushed out of the web. This is the process that you get into. That's all it took. So this is the process that you get into when you're building code with, with Cloud Foundry. Uh, it makes it really simple for, for, for and it makes it developers really simple to develop. For develop and then ops guys deploy. At the back end and it makes it really simple for the, 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 production. the ops guys at the back end of the process source when you actually get ready to go into production the same process. take that same source code and they do the same process. They do a CF yeah. push and they push production it to, to, to the uh, it takes a lot of the a lot of the hurt out of the process. That's the it takes a lot of the a lot of the hurt out of the process. And that's the that's what you're trying to do. Let's try something else. Let's do the system. Let's go try something else. Let's do go back up. I apologize about the audience there. And now I've got another thing here. This is a different. Uh, and now I've got another thing here. We'll go ahead and we'll push this, this is a different. Uh, well, a different app. We'll go ahead and we'll push him. We'll see a push on this guy as well. We'll let him start. Up. And we'll do some we'll different push on this guy. And we'll let him start up. And we'll do some Any different things to this one. Yes, sir. Any questions as we're going along here? Yes, sir. 
Oh, you just do a CF delete? Yeah, I'll do that in a second. Oh, you just do a CF delete? I'll, I'll clean up after myself. Yeah, I'll do that in a second. When you do a CF delete, basically, <laughs> no, I'll clean up after myself. It'll ask you if you want to. So when you do a CF delete, it'll basically well. pull the whole thing down. It'll ask you if you want to destroy the route. You can do that as well. You can do that from the right. side so of the strategy. So now I'm going to push this new app. This is the I'm one called Static App. All right, so now I'm going to push this new app. This is the one called Static App. Is go and so and look one of the things I can do as well, it's kind of fun to look at, build is go and things look at I can see um, here. I can say CF the, the build packs. One of the things, one of the things I can see here, I can say CF build packs. I can actually see all the build packs that are available that have been set up on this cloud. And I can actually see all the build this packs one doesn't that are have available that have been set up on this cloud like boundary system. So if I want to build this one doesn't have a ton, Ruby but it's kind of cute that I can go use. So if I want to build Java or Ruby yeah. or Node.js or those kind of things, tutorial. I've got the build packs out there to yeah. do that. The tutorial if you go through the tutorial that I'm going to show you at the end, the, the tutorial will actually take you through yeah. the process of going out and pulling the GitLab custom build pack, which you can, which you can get. There's a bunch of them out on GitLab and GitHub that you can go get, so you can pull them into your application as well. So if you need something very specific, you can get that as well. That's not too hard to do. But one of the things I can do to this guy is I can do SSH, and again, it's CF SSH. And I'm going to go in. And I'm actually logged into the app now. And so what can I do once I'm in here? And I'm well, actually logged one into I the app now. Is I can and so what can I do once I'm in here? Uh, well, one of the things I can do is I can go uh, see. I can actually go out to CD to app and then do an LS. I can actually see all the things that the build pack has actually pulled into the app for me. Another thing I can see those pieces that have actually been pulled in. Another fun thing you can do is you can do a uname minus A, and I can actually see what version of the kernel I'm actually running inside here. And, and lo and behold, it's an Ubuntu. Beauties are not the Susan guy. That's I can, I'm that's running, this is running beauties Susan about this. Cat. It doesn't matter, it's, right? I can, I can, I'm running, this is running on Susan Cat. cat. No problem. It's I can pull in an Ubuntu kernel and run it. No problem. If that's what I need for my application, that's what I do. Where it came I don't worry from, about it. I don't worry I about what, these things in. what pieces what are the things of where it came really from nice so much. Well, I can pull these things in. One of the things security. that's really nice what about this as well is getting in when you talk, start talking about security. Yeah. Well, what yeah, one of the biggest problems is security? Another thing is a big problem is attack surface. Yeah, well, yeah, How many attack surfaces do I have? Another thing is a big have? problem is attack surfaces. How many attack surfaces do I have? Well, take a look at this. application actually have inside here. Well, take a look at this. I always That's all. Is there. So this is my I'm app running. That's I don't all have is there. So I'm running top of this thing. I don't have many attack surfaces going on inside of my application. There's not a lot going on in here for me to do to, to have to worry about with this with this particular application. So let's sense? go out and take a look. So let's go out and take a look. And again, let's go off the Stratus again. Exit. And again, let's go off the Stratus again. And we'll And now I should see here, when I go back to Cloud Foundry, I should see. And now I should see here, when I go back to Cloud Foundry, I should see. And now I have two apps running. I've got static app and I've got web app. And now I have two apps And I've got a static app and I've got web app. And so I can go look at it. And well, it, we easy. had a question a minute ago about can I get rid of something? Well, that's, well, that's pretty easy to do. I can just go up here inside of Stratus, and it will ask me how to delete the route as well. I can do that. And this I don't even actually want to look at the route, though. Let's go before I blow it away. Let's go. And this is just the classic hello world. I'm not going to worry too much about him. Our friend here, Static App, I'm not going to worry too much about him. Basically, now. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And basically, now. That one is gone. Delete. And now all we have running is web app. So I've kind of cleaned up after and myself. And, close. As and now all we have running is web app. So yes, I've kind of cleaned up after myself as I've gone along through the process. Yes, sir? So with web app, yes. you had uh, an alteration, you had a change to it. Yes. Is there a way, there a way to revert to that previous change? Yeah, if, if you were doing this in the right way, the right, the, the, the yeah, it, what I if would you do were doing this in the right way, the right, the, 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 what I would do is I would probably put so this in. So one of the things in, that, in that, that 
I can actually call that cloud family. family. So one of the things that, that is, I think is that, that cloud family needs I more integration with lab, is, is those types uh, of pieces. That they were I was just at the, thinking, the GitLab this be great uh, we took a demo that they were doing. Together. And I was thinking, man, this cool. would be great if we took a very of these two things together. Um, we'd have a really cool happen. thing going on. So you're going to see more of that. Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, I guess what I'm asking is it doesn't store the previous version. No, it doesn't. In general, when you're pushing an application, the best thing to do is a blue, blue green appointment where you push a version two of the app and you can actually have both versions pointing at the same route. And then you can actually cycle how much goes to one of Yeah, you just kill it. So if you don't like yep. the version of the app, you still got the other the, one. Yeah, you just kill it. The, the, the actual tutorial, tutorial that I'll show you in a little bit I actually don't do a blue green process. The, the actual that's tutorial that I'll show you in a little bit actually don't takes you through my process. That's another thing, too, in this world. You don't worry so much about reverting, you just kill it and re push. And it's yep. all CLI, so you can do that with any form of CLI. So you can those concourse, uh, yep. and then it's Because it's just CLI commands, and it works in those Linux, so it doesn't matter what your base is. Excellent. So let's go. One other one here. One other one here. And this one's kind of fun. This one's called the imperfect app. And this one's kind of fun. This one's called the imperfect app. So let's do, what do I need to do? And this one again is in Ruby. So let's do, what do I need to do? CF. To make it run? Push. It's pretty easy. So the biggest problem with CF push. Push. You know what the biggest problem with CF push is? So the biggest problem with CF push. Do you know what the biggest problem with CF push is? Yeah, CP. I've done that too. CP. Yeah, or Cause I did, yeah. Yeah, look there, I just did it. Yeah, look there, I just did it. Yes, so I've got the problem is, after a few years, I've got CP and CF and I did it. CP and CF burned in my brain and fingers, and now I'm doing CF and I did it. Once you start playing with the Cloud Foundry, you'll hit this. The other problem, and I guarantee you, once you start playing with the Cloud Foundry, you'll hit this too. You'll wind and up being in your home directory like, and then do a CF. Well, let me see what I'm going to prepare. And the cloud founder will like, like a lot of well, let me see what I'm going to prepare. No, it's like a lot of junk and garbage. And it'll try and <laughs> it will <laughs> fail. And so anyway, you want to make hour. sure you're in the directory <laughs> where <laughs> your code so is. So anyway, you want to make sure you're in the directory where your code is at before you do the CF push. So there we go. That is true too. That's exactly right. So you want to make sure you're in the right space. That is true too. That yes, sir. That's exactly right. So you want to make sure you're, you can change that. What, yes, sir. With your static, what do you have in the previous example? That was in the bill pie. So yeah, we picked up that bill pie. If you want to, that was in the bill pie. I'm pretty sure there is. An so yeah, we picked up that bill pie. If you wanted, I, I, I'm pretty sure there is an Apache one. I could. Well. If you wanted to pick that one up, you can do it. So we're I now we're deploying this other app here. Again, this one's in Ruby 2. So we're now we're deploying this other app here. Again, this one's in Ruby 2. What is Sinatra? I What's Sinatra? Is that what, what it is? See, Sinatra? I'm not a Ruby guy. I, I don't know. It's basically Ruby for I know the first time what, I tried it. See, I'm not a Ruby gym. guy. I don't know. So I was like, well, what's a gym? I know the first time I tried it, I didn't even know what a gym file was. So I was All like, right, so what's a gym file? All right, so now we've pushed this new app out here. Again, let's go CF. All right, so now we've pushed this new app out here. Again, let's go CF app. I did it, didn't I? It's called it perfect 30 app. years. I did it, didn't I? 30 years. And there I, I find out all about my app and what's going on. The other thing I can do too. And there I, I find out all about my app and what's targets. going on. The other thing I can do too, and, and you were mentioning about targets and, type and, CF target. and, 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 and you spaces and orgs and all that. One thing you can type a CF target and you can actually see that I, I can misspell. When I got over here this morning, we got here to the hotel and I finally got connected. When I got over here this morning, that's the first thing I tried. We got here to the hotel and I finally got connected. 
That's the first thing I tried to see a target. Then I knew everything was working. I was like, well, once I once I get response back from seeing a target, I can I know that I'm talking to the cloud foundry system and set up for me that I'm org into. And it, it all's happy. You see, I'm in org, dsims.org, dash org, and it's and easy space to change. Space. So that's where I'm actually working space out. Change. And it's easy to change your space for your space. That's your space changes. Well. You can change um, your space where you're looking help? at. That's, that's easy to do as well. Minus a. Um, you can do CF help tell you everything you want to minus know a, and it will basically tell you everything and you want to know about the command system. There's tons of information out there. And one of the things you'll find if you go through this tutorial, it, wants you, to you you tutorial, it wants you to do this a lot. It doesn't tell you everything you need to know to do the tutorial. You have to figure it out. Why do they do it that way? Well, tell you exactly that's the best the way to learn, is really to figure learning. it out yourself. If, if they tell you exactly what to type for everything, you're better not really learning anything. Actually, you're just big and being a monkey, right? right? And and see what's actually it's better going to go out and actually now dig let's go out here and, and, and figure it out and again. see what's actually going on. Here, so now right. let's go out here and take a look at our app. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go out here, here and we'll there reload. I've got perfect app. We should have two apps right now. There I've got my perfect app. Route. Go down there and look at him. There he is. So Good. now I, I've got an app here running. I've got and one there he is. So now I've, I've got an app here running. I've got one instance of this app running. I can actually scale this, this instance. I can do that. But in the instance of time, I'm probably just going to go ahead and say, let's just try with In the instance of time, I'm probably just going to go ahead and say, let's just try and see what happens if I crash back over. So this app can be easily crashed. So let's go back over. And we'll type. Let's see what's going on with him now. Oh, he's perfect app. Let's see what's going on with him now. Well, basically, he's running. Well, what happened? Actually, picked well, up basically, the Kubernetes is supposed to be running, and it somehow Actually crashed. Actually, picked up the fact that this yeah. app is supposed now to be running, and it somehow it crashed. So, and if I go back, now, look over it started here. a new one for me. Uh, so, we'll see if, if I go back, look over you'll here. You'll notice there that this number uh, here on the end we'll changed. We'll see if the instance is available. Actually you'll start. notice there that this number look, here on the end changed a little bit, because we actually spun up a new one. So, let's do it. We'll and I'll see more if more I can catch him actually time. starting. Let me crash him, and I'll see if I can catch him actually ah, starting. Yes, I did catch him. He's crashed. I don't normally do that. Ah, I'm yes, I, I did catch him. He's crashed. I'm not normally that fast. I don't normally do that. I'm not, I can't, I can't, I'm not normally that fast that I can actually see. But if I try him again, I bet I'll find that he's, he's still crashed. And he stayed crashed. My demo has failed, and I don't know why. And he stayed crashed. <laughs> My demo has failed, and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Started finally, so it just took a while. Normally, it normally oh, goes so he fast. Started finally, it. so it this, just this, took a while. Normally, it normally goes so fast I can't catch it. So this 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 time, I was in a situation where I yeah, I don't, and I don't know who my, I don't know who else is using this. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know who my, I don't know who else is using this today. It's not running out on AWS. This is not a huge uh, installation. It's not running out on AWS. So there may be other folks out there that, doing that demos today that I'm not aware of, and that that could be part of the problem as well. I'm still not getting him back yet. I'm still not getting him back yet. Yeah. Okay, can't explain what's going on there. Not right off the yeah. bat. Okay, can't explain can what's going on here. And I can just take a Not right off the bat. But I can go out here and I can just take a quick look. He still thinks he's crashed. Summary. He still thinks he's crashed. Let's go look at the route again. Let's go look at the route again. I don't know what's going on there. 
and it's still there. Ah, the joys of doing live demos. Oh, it there. happens. So we'll ah, the joys of doing live demos. It there. happens. And we'll see so we'll just pop him and knock him off there, and we'll see that uh, he kind of goes away. And he's now gone. And if I go back out he's here, I should see. I've still got my web app running. Right here, the other. So I should see. Okay. Yes, sir. I've still got my web app running, but I don't have the other. So, okay. Yes, sir. You, yeah, you can. In fact, if you go through the tutorial, then we'll show you. you. Yeah, you can. In fact, if you go through the tutorial, then we'll show you. It'll take. It takes you through that whole process. I will try to do it now. We'll see. It'll take you through that whole thing. Eleven. So I got. One of the challenges. We'll see. We're going to go back to my slides. Eleven. So I got fifteen minutes. So let, let me go back to my slides here for a second. All right, so you're going to see here a number of links. This tutorial. All right, so you're going to see here a number of links. This tutorial that was actually built. It's called Zero to Hero. It was done by a company called Better Engineering. They, do, they, do. Um, they are a SUSE partner. They're one of our partners. They do. They do. They can help you with deployments. Also, they can help you with training. So if you actually want to get your whole organization trained on Cloud Foundry, the Better Engineering Group is a great folks great to look at. And they actually built this tutorial. So the, the examples that I'm showing you here today were built by this company called Better Engineer Better. Is the they they're based in the UK. Um, and I would urge you to go take a look at what they do. Uh, they have really good stuff. And the tutorial is all open source. So giving them attribution. that's why I can go grab this and actually use it. I have built giving this. them attribution. They, they, they the, allow the, the engineer vendor guys uh, have built this. Uh, also, they, they allow us to use it as well. Also, I point you to cloudfoundry.org. There are tons of resources out there. There are other trainings uh, and other tutorials Cloud out there as well that you can take a look at. Um, also, the Cloud Foundry org. If you look at the certified distros, you can see the, 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 the uh, differences between all the distros that are out there and how they work. Um, and then there's a really good, uh, really good piece out there on why Cloud Foundry. Why you might want to pick up Cloud Foundry and actually use it in your organization. So I Other think, useful. Uh, I urge you to take a look at that as well. Other useful links really help me in this process. Well, one of the things that, that really helped me in this process was a book. It's called The Phoenix Project. Now, if you ever, if you ever read The Phoenix Project, grab a copy of The Phoenix Project and read it. It's actually, you could read it about three hours. Grab a copy of The Phoenix Project and read it. It's actually, you could read it about, it's probably about a three hour read. I thought, give or take. I read it on an airplane. Walks you through the process of a company goes through. I thought it was pretty good. Because it actually sort of walks you through the process that a company goes through in a new way. That makes a change from doing things. things the old way to doing things that we learned early on. One of the things that, that, that we learned early on talking about Cloud Foundry, a lot of folks think they, they're going to set this up and they're going to learn, you know, they're going to change their organization, um, they're going to put Cloud Foundry and it's going to save you a ton of money. It probably won't save you a ton of money right off, right off, right off the bat. It will, it will make your, save you make time agile as you start implementing it. Uh, it will actually make your, help you get your make apps you more agile and fast. make you uh, so it will actually help, help you get your apps fast. actually out and deployed faster. So it will actually it will move things, things quicker. Process, it won't necessarily right. save you a lot of money in the beginning, but it, as you go through the process, it probably will. Other interesting so I would urge you to go take a look at that. So I had demo plan to be here already. Um, I didn't have internet so, this morning, so I had I demo plan B here already. So I if I didn't have internet that. this morning, so I was actually going to walk you through a bunch of screenshots, so I won't bore you with that. And, and that, I'm, any other questions that you might have? I, 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 I appreciate you actually asking questions today as we went along. It's, I, I didn't tell you to do that at the beginning, but I'm glad you picked up on it this didn't do anyway. I, I, I say when I go to a presentation, I really do that. don't do any of my slides. I, I, I say when I go to a presentation, if I don't do any of my slides at all. It's been a good presentation because that means we were having a conversation. That's even better. Yes, sir. Um, is it a, is yes, it there is. Uh, for, for, for the cloud application platform? Yes, there is. There is. There is uh, for, 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 for the cloud application yeah. platform? Yeah. There is one. There is, it, is, it is available as a Helm chart. Yeah. Uh, does yes. Uh, 
Yes. So we went the other way. My family, we went for uh, and then now we're talking Kubernetes, and everybody's playing with Kubernetes, and they don't think they realize it's more work for them. Mm -hmm. Do you find they're starting because they're finding it? They're starting yeah, it is. because they're finding that you know, that, 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 is, that, that is true. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, uh, I, I that, 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 that is that, that is true. Yeah. Kubernetes is. Um, I, I think they find that run on. Kubernetes is. But it doesn't. It's a great it's platform to run on. I mean, it's, it's but it doesn't. Some assembly requires <laughs> give you a lot of help. And I, I mean, think that's what you see with Some assembly requires. You know, I take. I get all. I think that's what you see with Cloud Foundry. Is that I can take and I get all I the get, advantages. I get all the cool stuff. When you're using the system pack product, I get I get all the cool stuff that you get with Kubernetes. But then I get this really nice interface on top of it to make my developers more uh, productive. Where are you storing the images? Are they like stem cells or? Where's, where's getting the base images to make so, you know, Kubernetes actually has its own storage system underneath. So, so, so you're using Kubernetes for, actually so has its own storage whatever, system whatever, underneath. Whatever okay. Kubernetes so you're using for, and so it can be whatever, whatever, now, whatever we Kubernetes would, we storage would, we that you actually have to I would add set up with it. Now, right? we would, we, we, being a SUSE guy, I would yeah, advocate using SAP, right? Because we have our own SAP distribution. And that plugs in really nicely to Kubernetes. But it could be something else. It could be sand storage or whatever. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. And so, really on Kubernetes, like, are you are you? Yes. Yeah. So a lot of cloud foundries have tons yes. of VMs. Yes. Yes. We've actually we've yes. containerized the whole thing. Yes. Yes. We've actually we've containerized the whole thing. They're still running on the AO cells in the current. The current release. The, they're still running on the AO cells in the current under the current release. Arini is in the 2.0 release, you'll be able to schedule under, those as when Project Arini is actually fully in place. You'll be able to schedule those as this. So that's that's uh, the next base step. Base so we're, we're sort of like right now we're still using the AO so cells. So that's that's the next step. So right. we're we're sort of like right now we're still using so the AO cells. Just, just pure and pure right, pure. we'll be moving to the ability to actually so use this just, just pure next Kubernetes next containers. Right. We, and so you had a question too. SUSE does have its own right. Kubernetes distribution. We, and you had a question too. SUSE does have its own Kubernetes distribution. We call it so the we're in, uh, we're SUSE a bit of a transitional app product. product. One of the things so we're that in, we're in a, we, a bit of a transitional app product. One of the things that happened, we, SUSE was actually developing a Kubernetes. We had a Kubernetes based yep. distribution. The for kind of guys came in with two, three years, years now. now. And then we thought the staccato guys we came found in the two of them were not really compatible. We thought everything was, but we yeah. found that the two the of them were not really compatible. The way that they build process in, and, and just the way that they were working, so one the way that they that build done, process and, and, and how things were doing. CTO, so one of the things that we've, that we've done is, now the, is the guy who is the CTO of staccato so is now the engineering head for that whole organization. So the, the, the SUSE Cassis product, which are all is the Kubernetes the distribution, and the Cloud Foundry distribution are all the same in our, in our containers and they have made some big changes. Four. So in our, in our very much containers and service platform version 4, it's going to be very much streamlined we're and much easier to install Cloud Foundry on top of it. You'll see that so version we're, come out. We're pushing toward that, that, that uh, You'll see that version come out in August. So, yes, if I'm like looking dangerously, can I do a Git checkout? Use uh, like version two now. And oh, the the right alpha in. of Clap. Yeah. Um, the alpha. You might use the oh, the, um, the alpha of Clap. Yeah, you have take a card. Oh, um, like, you take cards with it. Email take a card. Take one of my cards with you. Set up yeah. the right people. Email me next week. Okay. Yes. And, I, and I'll get I'll, I'll get you set up to talk to the right people. <laughs> Yes, the answer is we, we can help. Any other questions? <laughs> Glad to do that. Gosh, I'm done early. Any other questions? I've even got six minutes left. Gosh, I've done early. I've even got six minutes left. I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much for coming. You can go do your break early. You can go do your break early.
lot of work. But then, like, when it's storage, and like, you feel like you're doing treatment, you're like, oh, I need the storage thing, that was a smell of the surface, but I can't do it. And I help people on the system, and they don't realize that that's what they look like. like they're doing everything like this. How could these most people not work in the world? How do I say that? Yes. 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 Yes.